Hello again. Let's resume our discussion of independence of path and antiderivatives by asking a couple questions. The first question is one that we asked in the last video. For which functions and contours is the integral of f along the contour c actually independent of the contour c? Now in the last video we saw a sufficient condition. We saw that if f was analytic and the domain we were talking about was a simply connected domain, then that was the case that the, uh, the integral was independent of the path. We saw also that there was a fundamental theorem for contour integrals. Um, if you had an antiderivative for your function f, then in order to calculate the value of the integral along any contour, all you needed to do was plug the endpoints into the antiderivative and subtract. So this raises the question for us now, for which functions f do we actually have an antiderivative? When can we actually apply this fundamental theorem? Well, we're going to talk about both of these, and we'll see that actually these questions are related. The question of whether you have an independence of path property and whether there's an antiderivative. And the connection is this. Suppose that f is continuous on a domain d. Then the function having an antiderivative will happen if and only if the function's integral is independent of the path taken between the two endpoints. All right, now to, uh, to sketch a proof of why this is true, why you get an antiderivative exactly when you have the independence of path property, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at both directions. Now, first of all, let's suppose that you had an antiderivative. Then you can use the fundamental theorem of contour integrals. You know that because the antiderivative is there, you can just evaluate um, the difference of the antiderivative value at the endpoints. Now this will be the same number no matter which path you took between those two endpoints, and so it really doesn't matter the path you take. You'll get the same value for the, anti for the integral no matter which path that is. So you get independence of path. Now for the converse implication, uh, we want to start by assuming that we have independence of path and then show that there is an antiderivative. Now in order to show that an antiderivative exists, it's easiest just to uh, present one. And so that's what we do we're going to define the function capital F to be the integral, uh, the contour integral from z0 to z of f of w dw, where w is a complex variable. Now because we have the independence of paths property, we don't necessarily need to specify which path this is. But what you can do is show that with this definition, and busting out your definition of the derivative, the derivative of this function with respect to z actually equals the original function f. Now, you're going to be using deltas and epsilons in showing this. You're, uh, you're going to be using the ML inequality, kind of the first instance of what we claimed would be a very useful inequality. Please, uh, please consult that proof in your textbook and, and make sure it makes sense to you. But now that we have this theorem, we know that you have an antiderivative if and only if you have independence of paths. We want to know where do these properties happen? We know that for a given function and a given domain, they'll either both be true or they'll both be false, but we like to know when are they true and when are they false. Well, let's go back to that property we mentioned just a minute ago. We knew that you had the independence of path property if your function was analytic and the domain you were talking about was simply connected. So putting that together, we can say that uh, one way you can have these properties um, is for the function f to be analytic in a simply connected domain. In that case, you will have an antiderivative for the function in that domain. All right, so as we uh, end this video, let's just uh, keep in mind, there are a lot of functions out there for which we don't know how to take antiderivatives, just as was the case in first semester uh, calculus. Here's an example of a function e to the minus z squared, and you may not know what an antiderivative one should look like, but because this function is analytic, actually it's entire, um, there should be an antiderivative. Well, what's the antiderivative? Well, we're not going to get fancy. We're just going to use that idea from the proof. Uh, we're just going to take the integral from 0 to z of f of w dw. Now, in order to evaluate this, you would have to maybe use a numerical approximation or whatever, but it is an expression for a, an honest-to-goodness antiderivative. So keep that in mind. In the next video, we're going to take a look at some of the fine print. Uh, we'll see what can go wrong if you're not satisfying some of the conditions we've talked about for these theorems. See you then.